Hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Chris and I work at the Minnesota Zoo. And if you're not familiar with the Twin Cities area, the Minnesota Zoo is about 20 minutes, half an hour south of from where we are right now. And we don't have big animals that we can bring with you or bring with me to show you today because, well, I drove a minivan. Minivans don't fit the tigers and the bears and things like that. But we brought some small and fabulous friends for you to see. And we're gonna take a little trip around the world. We're gonna see an animal from Madagascar, who's right there. And we're gonna meet two animals from Minnesota and maybe an animal that you have in your house. Ooh, what could that be? That'll be one of our friends. Probably not a tiger, I hope not a tiger. We have some friends in the audience today too, which is nice, because I told them, no, clap for the audience, because sometimes I'm here all by myself, and so it's nice to have smiling faces with me. I hope you like what I brought. Do you like animals? Yes? Yeah. Good, okay. Well, we might test that a little bit today. My very first friend is our friend sitting over here, and I'm gonna open this up. These are not always people's favorites, we gotta be honest but these are some really cool animals. These are, they have a big name, Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And that kind of tells you all you need to know in three words, because where are they from? Madagascar. Madagascar. What do they do? Hiss. What are they? Cockroaches. I mean, it's really easy, right? I'm going to hold him up towards my microphone, see if we can hear him hiss. He's not trying very hard. But they do hiss. He's just, oh, now you're going to hiss? No. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear him. We can yeah. hear him. Well, and now he's just being rowdy, so he's going to go home. Ah! Now, the funny thing was, is we were watching our cockroaches running around earlier, and we have all boys in here, and they were kind of having a little dispute over who got to be in the top. It's kind of funny. Now, Madagascar hissing cockroaches, that hissing actually, other than sounding cool, has a pretty important part of their life. Because cockroaches in Madagascar are sometimes, well, they're sometimes food for other animals. And you guys think about Madagascar and maybe you remember, whoops, seeing or hearing about an animal called a lemur. Does that sound familiar? Some of them have those black and white tails. All right, let's see. Let's see if we get these guys going. Lemurs actually like to eat cockroaches. I mean, huh? somebody's got to, right? So yay for them. But they like to eat the cockroaches and the cockroaches aren't really big enough to fight them off and they're not fast enough to run away. So what happens is they all kind of live together under the, under the leaves and if a lemur jumps down out of the tree, they all hiss at the same time. And it could be hundreds of cockroaches all going at the same time. What other animal might that sound like? a snake, and that's exactly what they want you to think. And that lemur jumps down, hears says, nope, and goes back up the tree. It's a pretty good trick. And so that keeps them safe from a lot of animals because they make a big sound when they're all together. And these little cockroaches in Madagascar, you see this guy climbing out, his antennas are everywhere. This guy's like, where am I going, what's happening? When they live in Madagascar, they live in the rainforest, they actually have a really important job. Their job is kind of like garbage man and cleanup crew. Let's see if he can slide down or if he's gonna take a header. Oh, they do have little hooks on their feet, so they can be really good climbers. Oh, it looks like he's got it figured out. Friends, how fun would it be if you had sticky feet? Oh my gosh. When you're seeing his leg there though, you can see their other little defense they have on them. See all those spikes on his back legs? 
if you were an animal that picked up a cockroach in your mouth and you got all those spikes on your legs, ooh, in your tongue, would that hurt? Yes. And then you can see all those black dots down his side. That's where the s comes out of. They don't make the sound with their mouth. They make it with their body. So it's kind of like when we get mad and we go, <clears throat> if you were a cockroach, you would make sounds at that time because you'd be oh, so mad all the sound would come out of you. But the, oh, look at this, reverse. Maybe, maybe not. You see him moving his antenna around. A lot of people think that these up here are their eyes. Those are kind of, it's like he's wearing a hoodie. And those are kind of like two bumps in the hoodie. His face, I'm gonna see if I can do this without I see his little face is underneath there. And his little antenna just swinging around saying, why am I upside down, human? But they will eat all that stuff that the other animals leave behind. So think about all that stuff in our fridge that we don't eat, right? Maybe we forgot about the lettuce. We were gonna make a salad and we didn't. And the lettuce got kind of slimy. They're gonna eat it. They're gonna come and eat the strawberries that got a little moldy the mushy apples, that's what they eat. And that's kind of good for the rainforest because it keeps things clean. There are a bunch of animals called decomposers and they're gonna eat all the plant stuff that nobody else left and ate. Someone's gonna ask me, does this tickle? What do you think? Does it tickle when he walks up my arm like that? Yes, 100%, can't let him do that for very long. Ooh, it tickles, yes. Oh my gosh, remember I said they have little hooks on their feet and right on the inside of your arm like that? Whew. I don't know, that little hotel up there looks pretty full. I'm gonna put down this, this medium sized one and I grabbed for you guys some big friends. So I'm gonna grab this big guy over here who's trying to be shy. Oh, did you hear him? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's him hissing. Drama queen, oh my gosh. All right, and then have him just kind of, we do the calm down, we call this the calm down sandwich. Okay, now we're calm. You can kind of see in my hand just how long he is. He's like the length of my fingers. Everybody in the room right now has their mouths open, like, oh, that's not cool. So I'm gonna tell you guys a fun little fact. So it did something earlier in the week that none of us were super excited about. Some of us were, but a lot of us saw all that snow and went, uh-uh. But friends, if you live Minnesota, Wisconsin, if you live up in this northern part of the United States, snow is a good thing because our bugs stay small. We don't have Madagascar hissing cockroaches naturally in Minnesota. And that's because of our winter time, okay? I think that is a beautiful thing. Yes, everybody's shaking their heads in agreement, yes. But if you guys get a real good look at that guy, you can see those big bumps on the back of his little hoodie. And the boys use those for what do you think for? Fighting. That's like, think of like a big horn sheep or one of those big animals that likes to bash their horns together. The cockroaches do that too. They're just itty bitty when they do it. Okay. And you friends that are in your rooms, there's a number on the screen. Remember, you can call and ask questions and I will do my best to answer that. Did you see though the calm down sandwich worked, didn't it? Because now he's just like, <gasps> he's a chillaxin roach. Somebody usually asks me what the roaches names are. We don't name them. This is a group two, we don't name them. All right, friend, whoop, bonsai, all right. You, Linda, here he comes. He's back for more, climbing the sides. Yeah. Friends in the room are like, what? Remember, yay winter, yay winter. Yes, all right, let me, Put our safety lid back on. Everybody in the room will be happy for that. Safety lid. All right, you guys ready for friend number two? All right, 
So give me one second, I need to slide out. I realized today that a lot of my friends came with a lot of stuff. So this friend is gonna have that. And this is pretend friend. What is this? Salamander. Salamander. So the real one will be in here. How many of you guys have seen salamanders out? I mean, not right now, it's kind of cold, but yeah. So we have a couple of different kinds of salamanders that live in Minnesota. And this one is our biggest species. He's not as big as they get. But this is our biggest species. I'm just gonna leave him in my hand here for a second, see if he'll hold still. Probably not, he's on the move. There he goes, ploppity plop. Salamanders in Minnesota. Not quite the time of year for them yet. Here, little frown, I'm gonna put your, your little face up here so everyone can see how cute you are. Look at that. Look at that close up, oh my goodness. So this is a tiger salamander. And it's kind of a funny name, tiger salamander, because if you look at him, he doesn't really look like a tiger. But when they're little, these yellow spots, which you can really see on my fake one, when they're little, those spots are all kind of mushed together and they kind of look like tiger stripes. So that's kind of how they get their name. Now when I had him sitting up here on my, come here friend, when he was sitting up on my hand here for a second, he's got a lot of, lot of moss and stuff on him and that helps keep him kind of moist. You guys see that little foot? That little bitty foot and he's doing that thing with his chin. He's got big eyes. Can I tell you the coolest thing I know about salamanders? When they swallow their food, and they're going to eat like crickets and worms and things like that. When they swallow their food, their eyes literally kind of sink into their heads and their eyes help push the food down their throat. Think about how weird dinner would look at the table. If you were all sitting there, and when you swallowed, you didn't just swallow, but your eyes went like into your head. That'd be really weird. Now, our little salamander here, where do the, what happens to the salamanders in Minnesota in the winter? Because we said, yay, winter, small bugs. What does that mean for our salamanders? Where do they go in the winter? Hibernate. They hibernate, yeah. So, our amphibians, which are our frogs and our salamanders, <coughs> excuse me, they hibernate. So they will, around October, they're gonna get, well, they're not gonna be so happy with the Minnesota winter, and they're gonna say, that's enough, and they're gonna go down under the water. And these guys, you're not gonna see them for, like, think about this, friends. If you took a nap from Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter. That'd be one heck of a long nap, wouldn't it? That's kind of what salamanders and a lot of our other reptiles and amphibians in Minnesota do because they don't do the winter. It's too cold. Their bodies work differently. If I were, oh, you see he's trying to look at his buddy. Hi. No, okay. Um, so they're under the water. He's trying to bury himself. I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at all the moss on his belly. Ugh. Some people think that snakes are slimy. Snakes are not slimy. You know what's slimy? Salamanders, frogs, toads a little bit because they're in that amphibian family, but frogs and salamanders are definitely slimy. Their skin needs to be wet. And I'm not picking him up and touching him a whole lot because that skin is like a sponge. If I had, let's say, lotion on my hands and then I went and picked him up, guess what would happen? The lotion not only would get on him, but it would soak, like, it would absorb into his skin. And he's not really made for lotion, so that would be bad. 
So when we work with these guys, we've got to make sure that we don't have on any hand sanitizer, we don't have on any lotion, we don't have any other things happening because we don't want them to get soaking up the stuff. And I'm going to rotate you, friend. We're going to make sure that our camera friend can see you. Oh, this is not a treadmill. Let's not keep walking. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Salamander treadmill. Ah! Oh, now he's out. Okay, bye, friend. He's out. Now you can see how big he is. Where are you going? Nope. Oh my goodness. He's like, I need to go to the water. All right. Uh. I think, I wish one more thing, you guys see those tiny little feet? They are actually really good diggers, even though they have itty bitty feet. And somebody asked me sure? a while ago if they bite, and they don't really have teeth like we have teeth, it's kind of like getting like bit with no teeth, like ma 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 ma, getting gummed. Oh, there's a good picture. You can almost see his little eye. Look at that. There we go. All right, friend. So I was telling this guy, I think this is the first time he's been here, first time he's been on camera. So he didn't do too bad, but we don't want you to be too nervous. So we'll go ahead and put you back, bud. I got, All right. I got a question about salamanders. Yes. Well, when I was a kid, <clears throat> let's say like, I don't know, 40 years ago, right? Yeah, me too. Um, there used to be salamanders everywhere. They'd be like out everywhere. on the street. They'd be like on my cul-de-sac, like hanging out and, yep. and everything. And now um, I never, ever see one. Is that, what's what's going on with that? Where the salamanders Yeah, I remember, I remember as a kid, like playing in the sandbox and I thought I picked up a rock. It was not a rock, it was a salamander head scared me. Um, remember I talked about if I had lotion on, what would happen? They'd soak it up. What do you think happens in dirty water? They soak up all the chemicals and all the stuff in the water. And so our frogs and our salamanders are kind of the first animals that let us know that maybe water isn't so clean and they can't live there anymore. And so there's a lot of things going on, but part of it is water quality. And part of it is just kind of everything's, you know, the, the cities are getting bigger, right? And maybe the water isn't as private as it used to be, right? Maybe a pond that used to be in the middle of a field or a forest is now in the middle of a housing development. And the salamanders are like, nope, I want some privacy. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of factors, but those are probably two of the bigger ones. All right. Let's... Let's have a vote in the audience. You guys ready? Fur, no fur. We got one vote for fur. Raise your hand if you say fur. Well, you're gonna end up seeing them both, but we'll do fur first, all right. So I'm gonna put this up here. And you'll see why in just a second, because this little friend, whoo, he can, he can move. I'm going to give you hints, okay, ready? So we said fur, right? Are you thinking tiger? No? Okay, so here's the food. We ready? I'll put the food on his little picnic tray here. We got lettuce. Very nice. Do you guys like, what is that? Carrots? Yeah. Yes. We got some sweet potato. Less. Does anybody like kiwi? <laughs> Itty tiny bit of kiwi. Whew, we'll see if he likes that. I don't know if he usually eats kiwi. Little breakfast, little lunch. Oh my goodness, so much fun. There's parsley in there. They really got fancy on the food today. We got parsley. Oh. All right, what do you guys think it could be? Remember, I drove a minivan. What? Oh, because mom told you. Well, mom is right. It is one of our guinea pigs. Now, a lot of people say, okay, zoo person, why is there a guinea pig at the zoo? Uh, because they're awesome and they're cute. Yeah, and y'all went, oh. So I'm going to put him in here so you guys can see him. You just kind of went boneless there for a second, bud. All right. 
lunch. So this is whistle. Why do we call them whistle? What kind of a sound does a guinea pig make when they're excited and they want food? Feed, 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 feed. Yeah, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. It's kind of like a big whistle. Now, guinea pigs we have as pets. A lot of people have them as pets. Are there wild guinea pigs? Are there herds of wild guinea pigs roaming the South American grasslands? Not really. There's a lot of cousins of guinea pigs out there. And there's an animal called a cavey that is pretty darn close to a guinea pig. But these guys are, they're pets. They're domestic pets. A lot of our animals that we would, we kind of talk about him with, would never be cool with hanging out with us in a studio. Because a lot of these animals are, we'll cover up his ears, food for other animals, right? And so they're always on the, uh, on the alert, right? Like, whoop, you gonna get me? Whoop, you gonna eat me? Whoop, gotta run. Guinea pigs kind of don't, they still have those moments, right? If you've ever had a guinea pig at home, if you scare them, what happens? Gone. You see a little trail of dust. But these guys are much easier to take care of than some of their wild cousins, so we use them a lot. And they're adorable, and they're cute, and we love them. Now, he is, Chewing, chewing, chewing. Guinea pigs, do they eat a lot of food? They can. So that's one of the hard things. If you have a guinea pig as a pet, they need lots of fruits and vegetables. They like to eat hay. They constantly need to chew because their teeth are constantly growing. Wouldn't that be a good excuse? Like, I'm going to eat all day long because my teeth are growing. Guinea pigs get to say that. Now, here's something I thought was so cool. In certain parts of the world, like in Europe, it is illegal to have only one guinea pig. You have to have at least two. Why do you think that would be? Yes, they need friends. They need friends. And so when he travels, he travels solo. He has another friend at home named Chewy. And Chewy is kind of like the emotional support pig. Chewy doesn't do programs. Chewy has never lost that, oh, you're going to get me. So he stays at the zoo. And this guy, Whistle, he, he programs and he travels. And it's so cute, you guys. When they get back to the zoo, we'll put him back in their big house with each other. And they'll come up nose to nose to each other. And all you hear is, like they're telling each other the story of the last three hours. It's adorable. And then they go off and they, you know, and they go off. And, and so I don't know if you guys have ever seen at the zoo for a couple years now, we've had kind of like a guinea pig. Oh, by the llama exhibit, we've had like literally a herd of guinea pigs. One year, I think we had almost 20. And they all kind of moved in a herd. And it's really kind of funny because they're always, always like top guinea pig. And when her name was, this is, Two years ago, her name was Morticia. And when she walked, she had big, long black hair. And when she walked out, the rest of the guinea pigs just moved. Like, she may eat first. So they kind of have a little pecking order, for sure. I do have to say that um, this guy right here, Mr. Whistle, um, you might be able to tell he gets to eat first. Because he's a little fat. Yeah, guinea pigs can get fat pretty easy. Does anybody here have a guinea pig or know somebody who's got a guinea pig as a pet? You do? You have one or you know somebody? How many do they have? Two. Yes, two, good answer, yes. Yeah, what colors are they? You don't remember? They come in every color, like I, not, like not purple, but I don't, wouldn't that be awesome though? Purple guinea pigs. But black, brown, there's a red, there's white, Kind of eating, just eating kind of slow, friend. Got your head right behind the thing. Like you just know where to be. Let's move you a little bit. Do, 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 do. There you go. Close up with whistle. <laughs> it is kind of funny, guys. I don't know if you, 
none of these guys really do it, but we have had animals in the past that have caught their, themselves on camera. And then they're like, that's a really big possum, or that's a really big bird or something. And I don't think Whistle caught himself. Are you gonna finish that last little bit? We could put it in a to-go box. You guys have any questions about Mr. Guinea Pig? Here's what we're gonna do if my studio folks are okay with it. I'm gonna pick up Mr. Whistle and anybody in the audience, if you know that you can touch something, we're gonna give you a quick chance to pet the guinea pig. Is that cool? All right, friends in the, on watching us on camera and in the studio, give me just like five minutes. We're doing, gonna do a quick little meet and greet with Mr. Whistle. Yeah, you're not done eating, I know, I know. It's hard to be a little friend. It's hard to be tiny. And if you guys want to pet him, you can. Oh my goodness. To have some. They are just, and it's so funny. They're smart. Mm -hmm. They're so smart. You get near that refrigerator. They know. They know. Mr. Whistle doing the job. <laughs> He has giant eyes, doesn't he? But giant eyes are good because then you can see things coming when they're coming to get you. You want a pet? Oh, so nice. <laughs> so nice. We're going to get you guys real quick. Do you want to pet the guinea pig real quick? Whoa, beautiful. Yes. And we're going to sneak over here. All of our friends. There we go. Oh, Mr. Whistle on camera. Do, 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 All right. All right, we all good? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Whistle, you did a good job, buddy. Good job. All right, hold on, friends. We're going to put you back. Woo! Did you see that? You're like, I want to go back. And your little snack that you didn't finish. There you go. All right. Now, we got one more friend. And I'm going to move this because we don't need this anymore. And I'm going to tell you what this is before I bring it out because some of you might not like this animal. You already know what it is, don't you? I heard somebody else say, what is it? S That's a snake. <laughs> you guys are too smart. You can't get anything past you. All right, how many people are not a fan of snakes? Me too. But I will tell you that this is a coworker a coworker snake, so we are okay. All right, so this, we'll get the, the good camera here. Oh, look at the little face. So, when you look at this one's face, I wonder if you can see why he's called a hognose snake. See that little profile? He's got a little piggy nose. And they're called a hog nose snake because of that, that nose. Actually, it's not part of his nose. Instead of his, uh, instead of his nose, his scale going down, Mother Nature went flip, flipped it up. And it does two things. One, makes them kind of cute. Two, they use it to dig. So this is one of our Minnesota species. We don't see them a lot in the Twin Cities. They're usually a little bit further out towards the prairies where there's a little more loose soil and they can get up underneath that soil and dig a little bit. But other than that, he's got all the same characteristics as any other snake in Minnesota. They stick their tongue in and out. Why do they stick their tongue out? To smell, yeah. They stick their tongue out to smell. And if you look at his tongue, you can see that it's got a little fork on it, right? Two pieces of that tongue. And here's the cool part. There's two holes in the roof of his mouth. 
So he can real fast stick that tongue out, pull it in, shove it up into those holes, stick tongue back out. It's kind of like he's tasting the air. And with two different sides of his tongue, when he's hunting, he can tell what side the mouse is on. Do I turn right or do I turn left? That's pretty cool. They have amazing senses of smell. And you can kind of see that color. You think about being in the dirt, in the rocks, in the tall brown grass. Are we going to see him? No. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't like snakes. They bite. Right? Some people, they bite. So here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a really bold statement. You ready? Never in the history of ever has somebody been walking on a sidewalk, minding their own business, and a snake comes out of the forest, bites them, and goes back into the forest. Doesn't happen. If someone gets bit by a snake, three things happen. Are you ready? Thing number one, you might have stepped on the snake. And the snake went, ow, and it bit you. Is it fair for the snake to bite you? Yeah. Thing number two, you almost stepped on the snake. And the snake went, ah, and it bit you. Is that fair? Yeah. You know how most people get bit by a snake? They see the snake. They walk over to the snake, and they go, hi, snake. What you doing, snake? And the snake is like, quit. And they try and leave. And then like, who oh, come back, snake? And they're messing with the snake. And then guess what the snake does? Bites them. Never in the history of ever has a snake come out of the forest, tracked down a human being, bit it just for funsies, and went back into the forest. It's usually people fault. Now, this little guy is not going to bite. He knows we're not food, right? What is a snake like this going to eat? Tigers. Mice. So guys, show me, how big is a mouse? Some of y'all, yeah, some of y'all got big mice. You are very good fishermen. You're the big mouse. Most mice are, yeah, about this big. So you look at his head, he's got to go for like the littler mice. So he's going to go for the mice that are not quite full grown yet because a big mouse isn't going to fit in his mouth. What we normally think of for a snake, friends, is they can eat something three times bigger than their head. That's like you guys trying to swallow something about the size, a little smaller than these stools. I mean, yeah. Like swallow a pumpkin. One bite, no chewing, just nope, down. I've worked with snakes for a long time, and it's so cool to watch a snake eat. How do they get it in their mouth? I mean, it's bigger than their head. How's that going to work? How do they get it in? That's one thing they can do is if you guys put your hand on the side of your mouth and open and close, they can unhook their jaw, dislocate it. The other two things are equally cool is if you feel your chin, is your chin in one piece or two pieces? Down here. One. One is, yeah, if there's two, we're at the hospital. We can have that checked out. But <laughs> you, you, are, you are correct. One is the correct answer. And then the other thing is if you open up your mouth as big as you possibly can, your cheeks will hurt. Snakes don't have cheeks. So they open really big. They dislocate. They drop down, and this part opens up. Yeah, you can swallow a pumpkin. He can swallow a mouse. It's pretty darn cool. This little guy's name is Sly. Sly the snake. He is a hognose snake, Minnesota species. He is actually a grown-up. He's nine years old. This is all the bigger they get. They don't get very big. Remember Minnesota, winter, right? We don't get a lot of big, big, no giant Burmese pythons like the Everglades. Winter keeps them small. Yay, winter. We do have six to eight foot snakes in Minnesota, though. How many people wish I hadn't just said that? Yes. Six to eight foot snakes are called bull snakes, sometimes called gopher snakes, because we like the gophers here. Um, 
but those are big. Those are usually in the southern part of the state. Okay, now, I will walk around, we can pet the snake. Who, I have a feeling it's gonna happen over here, who absolutely does not want me to come anywhere near them with the snake? Okay, can I stand next to him and pet? Okay, yeah, she's not, or he's not gonna go anywhere. He's like the most like, we've had little Sly since he was smaller than a pencil. This is his job, he's totally used to this. But if you don't want to, you totally don't have to. Because honestly, True story, if we were outside and it was nice, warmer, and a garter snake went in front, nope, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, not doing that. Coworker, nature, where different. Where do snakes go in the winter time in Minnesota? Do you guys know, where do they go? Disneyland? I hope so. Arizona. Arizona? They what? Garter snakes, they have like a den underground. Yeah, they all head underground, yep. And most of them get together with a couple hundred of their friends and stay nice and cozy. <laughs> And it's this thing called a hibernaculum. And it, it's when they, they all pop out at the same time, it's not awesome to look. I don't like it. I saw one once in my backyard. And all my zoo friends were like, that's amazing. I'm like, mm -mm. nope, so not really. They yep, they kind of hibernate. They kind of just chill out. She did it. <laughs> High five, she did it. Yeah, she didn't want to, but she did. Yeah, so they kind of hibernate, hibernate throughout the winter. Too cold here. <laughs> Did you want to? All right. Yes? No? No? You're good? Okay. We are in the snake free zone over here. All right, friends. Oh, goodness. All right. See? It's just chilling. Chilling like a little snake. Well, I'm proud of you guys that tried it. Friends, in your room, we can do a virtual little snaky touch. Yeah. Bumpy, right? Bumpy, not slimy. Yeah, scaly. All right, I will say for our friends in the room, if you touched, we'll wash hands, right? Snakes don't take baths. For my friends in the rooms that are watching, thank you for joining us. And we are gonna check out here, but stay with the Star Studio. More fun stuff is happening, and we will see you next time. Thank you.